Hi, I'm Kate Colburn-Smith. Employers have both a legal and a moral responsibility to support their employees who choose to continue breastfeeding after returning to the workplace. This support involves three simple things. Providing time for a woman to express her milk during the workday typically takes 15 to 20 minutes and a woman would need to do this about two times during a normal workday. She will also need the space, some private space in which to express her milk. And it cannot be a toilet stall, but beyond that, there are a lot of options for private space in any work environment. And finally, an employer needs to not discriminate against a woman for taking this time out of her workday to provide milk for her baby. Yeah, so Amy came in to see me, and uh, it, I was a little bit surprised because she, well, she's pregnant. And I, that surprised me to begin with, but um, she came to talk to me about um, what, what she's going to be going through. And she mentioned breastfeeding, which I understand that that has to happen, but it did surprise me that it might happen in the workplace. Uh, I just figured it was something that she could do at home or, you know, out in her car. <laughs> but um, it, apparently she wants to have a place there at work uh, where she can actually pump. She was talking to me about pumping. She says pumping. I don't know what that is. I, you know, it, pump what? What are you talking about? The only thing I pump is gas. So I didn't understand that. I mean, I just figured the baby latches on and that's it. But um, they, they have to pump the milk, and then later she can use that milk apparently to feed her child. So we had to talk about that. We had to talk through how that's going to work. Uh, how much time is it going to take? You know, I run a business and I need my employees to be there working. Um, so it was it was good. I mean, I'm glad that we got to talk about it. But at first, I was just. It just sort of shocked me. I guess I was embarrassed. I, I don't know what else to say. You know, uh, a woman comes to you and talking about her breasts. You try to pretend that they don't even exist. Uh, you know, we have all this training about sexual harassment and, you know, all those kind of issues to deal with. Well, they're just breasts, so you have to get past that. With good communication and some planning, any of these hurdles can be overcome. And when you prepare to approach your employer about the support you'll need to express milk in the workplace, don't assume that he will have any clue how to support you. So you'll need to come with a specific request in terms of how much time you'll need, what space you would like to use to pump your milk, and how you will continue to get your job done just as effectively and productively as you always have. As we talked through the situation, uh, you know, I began realizing she might be gone more often than I'd like. I understand that she has to, to uh, be pumping and all that, but, um, you know, she also needs to work. So we're trying to work that out. We've been talking about some different options. Uh, I might do something where if she has to be gone, let's say three times during the day to, to go pump, maybe she can work a little longer at the end of the day to make up for that. Um, we're also considering the idea of maybe a split shift where, you know, she can do whatever she has to do in between that time and and uh, she'll still get her work done and, you know, I still feel good about paying her for the job she's doing. I've also become aware through this process uh, that there are some legal issues here that I need to deal with, some, some laws I need to comply with as an employer. And, uh, you know, I'm all for that. I Obviously, I want to run a fair, good business that's above board and that's, that treats people right. And uh, so I'm looking into what those are too to make sure that I'm in line and, you know, doing what, what Amy and others need here at the company. Ideally, the conversation between the employee and the employer will occur as a natural part of the conversation about the fact that the employee is expecting a baby and the fact that she'll need some time off of work and what kind of support she'll need when she returns to the workplace. So the best time to have the conversation is before you go on maternity leave. I guess I've also realized that it's not just me. You know, uh, my boss had to kind of be on board with this and I don't know how far up the ladder it needs to go, but you know, it has to be kind of a company-wide policy. Apparently other women in the, in the uh, company are dealing with this too. I began thinking maybe I should set aside a room. I, I don't know what that would be. You know, we'll, we'll find a place. Just a, a place where they could be alone for a few minutes, uh, do whatever they have to do, and uh, you know, I, it wouldn't interrupt the workday that much. Now that it's behind us and we've talked this through and we have a plan in place, I actually think that I'm going to see even more loyalty out of her, you know? At least that's my hope as an employer, that if I'm kind of giving for her, that she'll uh, read that as an incentive to keep giving, as she always has been, for the company. And uh, it's just a little bump we'll get past, and, you know, we'll move on. 
I'm so happy that I met with my employer before I left for my maternity leave. It was really wonderful knowing that there was a supportive environment I was returning to that would help me maintain my pumping goals. I encourage you to set a goal for how long you'll continue breastfeeding after returning to work. Know that you can achieve that goal and even go beyond it, and that there are tons of resources to help you. On coloradobreastfeeding.org, there is great information and links. You can turn to your pediatrician, a lactation consultant, and most of all, to other working moms who have continued breastfeeding and gone through exactly the kinds of things you're experiencing.